Okay, honestly think about how exciting would it be to see your art or art products on the shelves of local boutiques and restaurants. Seriously, to be able to walk around town showing off your friends which businesses to pop into to see your work in person, not only is it like the most satisfying feeling, but it is actually a pretty nice way to generate another source of income from one of your many irons in the fire for your own small art business. Welcome to Ask an Artist number eight. I'm Kaylee Bird, and today I'm going to share with you some tips for getting your art and art products into local businesses as far as the experiences that I've had in the past. This is actually an excellent question posed to me by Shauna Renee Savage in my recent video where I was asking you guys for a little input on what you need to help further your art career. It was kind of an involved question, but honestly is such a good one that I'm just going to read the whole thing. So she says, what are the step by steps of how to approach a local business with your art or merchandise, such as stickers, t-shirts, mugs, etc.? Do you call ahead, email, snail mail, a sample of your merchandise, or simply show up with a business card and merchandise? Should there be contracts? How does that all work? Is it a different approach for a restaurant or dental office versus a gift shop? Not quite there yet, but I have goals. Art takes time. Yes, it does, Shauna. Wow, Shauna, thank you so much. That question is amazing. It is super involved and I am literally going to get to the entire thing. So in a nutshell, my experience as far as selling in shops and stuff, I had um, my sock monsters, uh, which are these amazing little plush dolls I make out of socks. Um, I used to do be a crafter vendor around town and I've had these in about eight to 10 shops throughout Charleston and then also one that sold hundreds of them um, down in Savannah. I've also had my fine art hanging in a few restaurants and boutiques around Charleston, as well as, of course, some multi-use and art venues like as a result of being in art shows. And then while I was living in Hawaii, I came out with a line of greeting cards, my Happy Hawaiian greeting cards, and I wound up having these in two different shops on island. So I have had a bit of experience having actual art and art products in various shops and stores and things that aren't necessarily art galleries. First and foremost, the very most basic thing you need to make sure before you approach any kind of shop or business or whatever with your art or art products, the most basic number one thing you must do is make sure that your art or product is going to actually be a good fit for this business. Is it similar to something they already carry? Is it similar to the theme of the business? Is it something that they don't already carry, but you can tell that their niche market would love it? Like first and foremost, do not waste your time or theirs if you have some kind of product or piece of art that is wildly drastically going to stick out like a sore thumb in the business you're trying to approach. Just save yourself the hassle. So give yourself a real critical eye. Will your work actually fit in with this place in a complimentary way that will be beneficial to that business? Because this is not just about you. This is about benefiting that business too. So as far as should you show up, call, email, cold call, what kind of thing should you do? I'm going to first give you advice for complete cold calling a business that you have nothing to do with. They don't know you. You don't really know them. Um, but at the end of the video, I'm going to definitely tell you the dirty little secret of contacts and connections that not everybody wants to tell you. Um, so first of all, show up, call, email. I would advise showing up. I mean, just calling, emailing there. It's just so easy to ignore those things. You just want to show up. You're going to cold call the business. It's better to cold call in person, not through phone or email because those things get ignored. And does it matter for an office versus a shop or restaurant? Like, yeah, it does because you have to interact with businesses in different ways. Okay. So if you're going to cold call like a boutique or a shop, then walking right in with a few of your products uh, right up in there and just starting to talk to whoever you see first is the way to do it. Don't go in to a shop and ask to speak to the manager because even though you want to talk to the manager, what you want to do is you actually want to get whoever is like working in the counter or whatever on your side. You want to get them like interested in what you've got going on so that then they will go tell the manager like, oh, hey, you need to come talk to this person. They're really cool. They've got this and this going on instead of just some random somebody wants to talk to the manager because trust me, I've worked in retail and when somebody randomly walks in and says, I want to talk to the manager, 
The manager says, I'm busy, tell them to call or whatever later so I can ignore them then, basically. Like, it just, nobody responds well to that because it's kind of like a, dear to whom it may concern. It's just like, okay, this is so not for me. So you want to go in there and just kind of chat with whoever you see first and say, hey, I see you've got this, this, this. I see you feature this artist. Like, you guys are awesome. I love this about you. I think that my product would fit in here really well because of this in this region. I think that your customers would like this because of this and this, don't you think so? Blah, 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 blah. And then get them talking, kind of get them on your side and then say, hey, who do I talk to about that? Is there someone here that's like in charge of ordering or something like that? Is there perhaps a buyer or the owner or something? And then that salesperson or whoever's behind the desk will kind of be on your side and will be a little bit more informative and they'll be a little bit more apt to get that person to actually talk to you and look at your goods rather than just sounding like some boring blanket salesman. Um, if you're talking about wanting to hang artwork in a restaurant, which can be really a great way to get some exposure. Now you might not necessarily sell a lot of artwork that's hanging in a restaurant, but if you are doing it in a local place, it's always good to get exposure and have people familiar with your art, especially if you get in a few restaurants around town, people keep going out and they're like, man, I keep seeing this artist all around town. They must really be something. So hanging your work in, um, um, restaurants and stuff can be good. The best time to do that is you want to go in like when it's their slow time. So in between meal times. So like 3 p.m. or maybe 4 p.m. if they open for dinner, like coming in right as they open or 10 minutes after or something like that. Come in when it's very slow. And I would say maybe bring in like one or two smallish pieces of work that you can carry in your hand and or some photos, like some actual photos, not just your cell phone, but like some printed out photos, something that you can carry in your hand, but that's bigger than like a phone screen and you can walk in and then you will want to go up to the bar or the hostess and say, Hey, you know, is your manager around? And like, while you're asking them, you're showing them your artwork so that they, as they go to find their manager and they can say, Oh my gosh, this person has these really cool paintings. Yeah. You should really come check out this artwork. Yada, yada. Like really you want to get whoever you see on your side as soon as possible. Now, now, if you're going into an office, like let's say you want to go into like a pediatrician's office because you do children's portraiture or something like that, which is a really, really good idea. Those kinds of places you really want to be very careful how you approach because they're really not used to having people come in and approach them and, you know, try to like solicit them. And most time you will see an office that say big, no soliciting sign. So the best thing for those would be to go into the office. I would say not with artwork in hand and talk to the receptionist at the desk and say, Hey, I'm a local artist. I've got, you know, portraiture I think would look really well in your shop. What's the best way for me to submit a suggestion for some artwork to hang on your walls? Is there someone I can come in and make an appointment with or is there an email I should send this to? You know, because for them, they really, it's not something that the front desk lady is going to be able to handle. There's not going to be a manager there that can kind of handle that kind of thing. And you really don't want to bombard them because they're like in their hand dealing, you know, people's medical paperwork and stuff like that. So for offices like that kind of thing, or even if it's not a medical office, even if it's just a regular office, you really want to go in and talk to the secretary and ask who's the best person to talk to. How can I submit? Can I get some contact information? And again, I would recommend going in person, dressing nicely with a big smile on your face and just, you know, generally being a person that they are going to want to work with. No matter who you're approaching, the number one thing to remember is that you want to talk about how having your products or your artwork in their shop or business is going to benefit them and their clients. Don't go in talking about how much they can help you. Go in and talk about how you can help them and add to their atmosphere and create something unique that you know their, their clients are going to enjoy viewing while they're there or whatever. You need to figure out how your artwork can benefit their space and that is going to be your quote unquote selling point. Definitely come in with examples and your business card or even like a printout, something like that, that has information, details about whatever product or art you're trying to have in there. The more professional you can look and the more put together, the more they're going to want to work with you. And as far as being professional, yes, having a contract is a good idea because you need to figure out, okay, if your work is going to be hanging in this space, are they going to take a cut of it? If your work sells now, if it's a boutique or a shop, the answer is probably going to be like 50% 
percent. If it's a restaurant or an office, they might not take anything or they might just take like 15%. But you want to have all that worked out and having a contract beforehand is a really good way to make sure everybody is on the same page and that you look very professional. You also need to decide, hey, are they buying your work? Like some stores might want to just buy your work at wholesale 50% off prices, but a lot of places are going to want to consign. And if you're consigning your work, well then how often are they supposed to pay you? How often are you supposed to go by and check up and see if they need new work? Who is responsible for making sure that you get paid on time or that your work is replaced as it is sold? Like those are all things that you need to work out with whoever decides to hold your artwork because trust me, if you don't work those things out beforehand, it can get really messy. I've definitely had products like not return to me or payments that took forever to get to me. And one time I even came by a restaurant that had my artwork hanging and it was in a closet after I'd been calling them for weeks to come back and pick it up. And they just didn't even bother to tell me that it was like in a broom closet. So definitely need to work all of that stuff out and make sure you have a good liaison at any place you do wind up consigning your work. For the most part, you're really going to need to stick with locally owned small shops and businesses around your town because it's just too much to get into like the corporate world. Like don't go to your quote unquote local target and try to get on the shelves there. Yeah, it's probably not going to happen. And the one kind of place that I would be most wary about would be co-op gift shops that cost money or time to get into. Now the time factor is not a bad one. There's one that I used to sell my sock monsters in where everybody would work like one or two days a month or something, which was great. But any of these galleries that ask you to like pay money to have your work on their walls or on their shelves, I would just be very careful because they don't need to sell your work. They're already making all of their money off you. So just do the math on that one. Like unless it's in like the busiest street corner in town, I would not pay to have my work anywhere. Okay, now time to level with you guys. So the reason I say there is a dirty little secret of contacts and connections, it's not really a dirty little secret, but the thing is is that a lot of people when they're giving instructionals or tutorials or whatever, just wanna list out the steps like I just did at the beginning of this video, and they don't really talk about really kind of usually the number one thing that gets artists like a little recognition and a little bit of at least their first jump in some recognition or their first boost, and that is who they know, like who they're connected with, your contacts. like. Who do you know? Where did you go to school? Who do your parents know? Like, who have you worked with? What community are you in? Like, literally, contacts, connections, that goes so far. I'm gonna be honest with you, probably about three quarters of the places that I have had my work in, I had some kind of contact or connection with those, with those people, with those business owners. And love it or hate it, that's sort of the way of the world. Like, I can understand you would hate that, because you might be like, but I'm a good quality artist and just because I don't know anybody, does that mean that I don't deserve to have my artwork get sold? Like, you know, just because, you know, X, Y, and Z knows this person, all of a sudden they're out making all their money off of their artwork, even though I know my art is better than theirs. And just because they know somebody or they were born to with certain parents, they get all this like great exposure that I don't. And yeah, the, the answer is yeah. And that's, it stinks when you look at it like that, but if you look at it in the positive, like love it because there's nothing stopping you from becoming part of a community of artists and art lovers. Like the thing is, is you have to look at these small businesses, whether they're galleries, they're local restaurants, they're local boutiques, whatever, any of these small businesses, they are very difficult to keep afloat, okay? Target and all them, they're having an easy time, okay? Little mom and pop stores, it is very difficult, okay? So for you to expect to come in and be like, hey, I don't know anything about your business, but here, go sell my art for me and make a million dollars and I'll come back in a few months to pick up my check. Okay, thanks, bye. You know, it's like, why would that appeal to them instead of someone who's like, hey, I'm a patron of your business. I care about this. I care about your people. Like, you know, if you want small business owners and stuff to notice you, maybe go to their small business occasionally. Like if you have a birthday coming up, don't shop for it on Amazon, shop in their small business, you know, be seen, be a face around town. You know, think about maybe you go to a coffee shop all the time and they know you. Well, that now you're part of their community. They're going to be more apt to want to show your work. If you show up to their things, you know, galleries, that kind of thing, go to their openings. You know, you don't, necessarily don't feel like you have to go like spend a whole bunch of money at these businesses because I understand I'm an artist too, but somehow be part of them or like for me, okay, 
back in the day, I worked food and bev. I had a ton of friends that were bartenders and waiters and stuff and all kinds of other restaurants. So if I thought that one of their restaurants was a good fit, I'm like, hey, introduce me to your boss or whatever. Or I would have people that would see my artwork and say, oh my gosh, you should really show here or I've got a friend here or whatever. And that was literally how, like I said, like 75% of my stuff got out there was just by just knowing someone and being part of a community and showing up and being at community events and being a familiar face. Like that counts for so much. So I know that it takes time, but that's what community is, is it takes time. And realistically, you really only want your stuff in shops close to you for the time being that you can keep your eye on. Like I would not, if you live in Wisconsin, I would not be applying for shops in California because you're not going to be able to like go by there and check up and see how things are and make that connection. And honestly, if you go by whatever store or restaurant or something that your stuff is in and maybe you're able to somehow strike up a conversation or a salesperson says, Oh yeah, that art on the wall. Yeah. That's the artist right there. Like being present around customers and stuff too can be like huge. It can be so huge for selling your work. People are like five times more likely to buy work from an artist that they have met versus one that they haven't. Like if you think about it, it really makes a lot of sense because so much of how small businesses are able to operate is by the community coming together and caring about them, right? So if you want a small business to care about you, guess what? You probably need to care about that small business, right? It, it, it works. It works. And one more reason to love it, honestly, is that the nice thing about once you start getting into a community and making those contacts and connections, it kind of starts to snowball. So at first you're going to be asking everyone, can I have my art here? Can I have my stuff here? Da, da, da. But once you kind of start to be like, you know, an artist about town, people will then start asking you, like, I would get approached to have my work at places by having my work at other places. Or I would be invited to like take part in group shows because somebody saw my artwork at the you know coffee shop or whatever. So that's the nice thing about once you start getting into a community is that things will get easier and you will start to get asked instead of having to do the asking. So again, you can love it or hate it. I would choose to love it because if you work the community, it can work to your benefit and bonus. All that's going to happen is you wind up with a bunch of cool, creative friends. <laughs> To see all my great talking points in a tidy little write-up just for you, check out my corresponding blog post in the description box below. And here is a playlist if you need a few more videos on running a sweet art biz. Thanks so much for being here, guys. I hope you learned so much, and I'll see you in the next one.